akademik ve idari personelimizin, bütün yönetim ekibimizin gayretleriyle e, kısa sürede e, çok önemli mesafeler kat ettik. E, i̇ki ay önce 30 bin dünya üniversitesi sıralamasında 3 binlerdeydi. Yani yüzde onlardaydı Gümüşhane Üniversitesi e, yapılan sıralamada. E, bunun dışında e, topluma katkı noktasında gerçekten üniversiteyle şehri buluşturduğumuza inanıyoruz. E, sosyal sorumluluk projeleriyle öğrencilerimiz ve akademisyenlerimiz başta şehir olmak üzere yöreye, bölgeye çok önemli katkılar sağlıyorlar. E, bu arada e, yine üniversitemizin e, son dönemde e, ortaya koyduğu performans noktasında e, bazı birimlerimizin aldığı başarılar bizi gururlandırıyor. Burada bahsetmeden geçemeyeceğim. İletişim fakültemiz e, işte yaklaşık e, bir hafta on gün önce e, TRT'nin düzenlemiş olduğu Uluslararası Genç İletişimciler Yarışması'nda bir birimcilik ve bir üçüncülükle yine göğsümüzü kabarttılar. E, üniversitemiz yeni bir üniversite olmasına rağmen uluslararası ilişkilere de önem veriyoruz. E, nitekim e, üniversitemizin açılış tarihinden e, 2000 17 yılına kadar yapılmış bilimsel etkinlikler dışında e, bizler son e, 4 yıl içerisinde Uluslararası Gümüşhane Sempozyumu, Sürdürülebilir Uluslararası Turizm Sempozyumu, e, Uluslararası Doğal Afet Sempozyumu, e, Uluslararası Marka Sempozyumu başta olmak üzere e, çok sayıda e, bu Tiflis'te ve bugün yapmakta olduğumuz e, bilimsel araştırmalar e, kongreleri ee, üniversitemizin e, uluslararası etkinliklere, bilimsel faaliyetlere verdiği önemin e, birer örneği, e, birer güzel e, örneklerini oluşturuyor. Çok değerli katılımcılar, e, bir diğer nokta paylaşmak istediğim sizlerle, e, üniversitemizde ilk defa 21 farklı ülkeden e, öğrencilerimiz var. E, yani uluslararası öğrencileri kabul noktasında da son yıllarda önemli bir e, aşama kaydetti üniversitemiz. E, bunun dışında e, uluslararası etkinlikler e, bizler için önemli ve e, ben e, bugüne kadar düzenlediğimiz etkinliklerde görev alan, katkı sağlayan e, bütün arkadaşlarıma huzurlarınıza teşekkür etmek istiyorum. E, kongrelerin e, kurumlar ve bilimsel bilginin üretilmesi ve yayılması noktasındaki önemini hepimiz biliyoruz. Bu nedenle de önemsiyoruz. İnşallah salgın sonrasında hem bu bilimsel araştırma kongresi serimizin bir tanesini de Gümüşhane'de yapmak arzusuyla bütün akademisyenleri Gümüşhane'mize bekliyoruz. Gerçekten ülkemizin her yöresi gibi Gümüşhane yöremizde gerek doğal zenginlikleri, gerek tarihi ve kültürel değerleri açısından son derece zengin. Misafirlerimizi bu zenginliklerle de buluşturmak arzusundayız. Ben başta düzenleme komitesi başkanı olmak üzere ortaklarımız olan, kongre ortaklarımız olan Yunus Emre Enstitüsü Başkanımıza Sayın Profesör Doktor Şeref Ateş'e Hazar Üniversitesi Kurucu Rektörü ve Mütevelli Heyet Başkanı Profesör Doktor Hamlet İsakanlı'ya, Uluslararası Saraybosna Üniversitesi Rektörü Profesör Doktor Ahmet Yıldırım'a, İvana Çakavşvili Tiflis Devlet Üniversitesi Sosyal ve Siyasal Bilimler Dekanı Sayın Doçent Doktor Tamar Dolbay'a çok çok teşekkür ediyorum. Emeği geçen herkesi kutluyorum tekrar. E, katılımcı arkadaşlarımıza e, başarılar diliyorum. E, hepinize sağlıklı günler diliyorum. Hocam hem konuşmalarınız için hem verdiğiniz bilgiler için hem de kongrenize katkılarınızdan dolayı çok teşekkür ederiz. E, değerli katılımcılar bildiğiniz gibi kongremizi online olarak gerçekleştiriyoruz. Malum pandemi şartları sebebiyle ve e, dolayısıyla sizi de Gümüşhane'de ağırlayamıyoruz. Biz de birazcık da olsa Gümüşhane ile ilgili sizi bilgilendirmek istedik. Şimdi ise Gümüşhane Valiliği ve Üniversitemiz İşbirliği'nde hazırlanan Gümüşhane Tanıtım filmini ve sonrasında da 
e, Gümüşhane Üniversitesi tanıtım filmini baş başa bırakıyorum sizlerle.
Burası Gümüşhane. Bir üniversite hayal et. Ormanların, yaylaların, göllerin ve nice güzelliklerin merkezinde. Zirveyi hedefleyenlerin hayalinde. Dünyayı değiştirmek için iyi bir mühendis olmayı isteyenlerin. Sanatla, sinemayla, duygulara yön verenlerin zihninde. Bir üniversite hayal edin. Sportif başarılarıyla göğsümüzü kabartanları. Güzel yürekleriyle hayat kurtaranların gönlünde. Bir üniversite hayal edin. Araştırma, geliştirme çalışmalarıyla evrene güzellik katanların, yaşamı yeniden tasarlayanların içinde. Bir üniversite hayal edin. Hesabını bilenlerin, yönetmeyi öğrenenlerin. Yaşamın renklerini insanlığa sunanların merkezinde. Bir üniversite hayal edin. Dünyayı değiştirirken sportif, kültürel ve sanatsal alanda ülkeye damga vuranların bir arada olduğu bir üniversite. <gülüyor> Ulusal ve uluslararası değişim programlarıyla yerelin gücünü dünya ile buluşturmak isteyenlerin her daim yanında olan bir üniversite. Dear colleagues and Değerli katılımcılarımız, şimdi ise yurt dışından kongremize destek veren davetli konuşmacıların videosunu izleyeceğiz. Sizleri baş başa bırakıyorum. Students, my name is Daria Dorshkevich, and I am very honored to be keynote speaker at this conference. I want to share with you the results of my last research on the topic, the analysis of factors that influence on workplace digitalization. The worldwide increase of the digitalization level leads to a situation in which international companies have to adapt to the trends of remote economics and change the working environment of their employees. Statistics confirms the growth of people working from home and building careers remotely. Increasing the level of mobility of personnel and digitalization of the workplace lead to the fact that the level of digitalization of the workforce is a powerful factor for the intensive growth of the whole tech company. Strengthening the level of security, the presence of digital etiquette, corporate culture, the moral stress of staff to keep in touch can lead to burnout and reduce the employee's performance and therefore profitability of enterprises. One of the main objectives of the presented research is to identify tools that can increase the level of the digitalization workplace and at the same time enlarge the efficiency of working staff. The digital workplace can best be considered the natural evolution of the workplace. A significant business case is the benefits of taking the digital workplace. According to Deloitte, digital workplace benefits are attracting talent, 
employee productivity, employee satisfaction, retention of employees, and communication and collaboration tools. Remote management is a method of managing business as well as other areas of human life in which management becomes possible without the direct involvement of the leader, but with the possibility of feedback. Referring to the previously published publication on this topic, we can say that companies with remote management are becoming more widespread around the world, from virtual small business assistants to teams of large companies such as IBM, to digital startups with fully remote teams. According to Global Workplace Analytics, remote teams increase employee productivity, satisfaction levels, and can save a company a lot of money annually. That is not including the benefit of tapping into a global talent pool. The Harvard Business Review magazine conducted a staff survey and concluded that workers around the world are seeking freedom and flexibility. The most common form of flexibility offered by companies is the ability to work remotely. A new study found that one third of workers worldwide always or frequently work remotely. Compared to a decade ago, the number of remote workers increased by 115%. After polling more than 200 employees and managers around the world, a survey found that two thirds of remote workers do not work with the team and more than a third of them never meet with the team. But more than 40% said that communication could help build a closer relationship. The study also suggested that remote workers are far less likely to remain with their company for a long time. And now, in the terms of quarantine, we see the situation that remote work is real and will be used in future more actively. Today, I want to show to all the methodology for assessing the level of job digitalization and to evaluate the level of workplace digitalization on the example of a company IT marketing, taking into account technical and moral factors. An analyzing of the literature has shown that the focus of the researchers is mainly on the technical aspects of assessing the level of workplace digitalization. Moreover, they all highlight the factors that have a greater impact on the digital workplace. They have decided to combine the views of different scholars into one methodology that includes both technical factors and factors of moral preparedness. You can find different factors that we included in it uh, in every stage of this methodology on the slide. We have conducted a sociological survey of the employees of the Ukrainian company IT Marketing. Each employee has his or her own digital workplace and experience of remote work in various positions as a contractor or as a manager managing remote work. 102 people took part in the survey, of whom about 55% were men and the rest were women. The respondents answered 25 questions that you can find on this slide, each related to an assessment of their digital workplace and to a specific stage in the methodology. The calculations on the figures shown on the slide indicate a satisfactory level of job digitalization in terms of evaluation of work with automated business processes. The automation of project teamwork and the level of usage of digital files and podcasts are of the particular importance too. Podcasts are not really used to organize the work of the enterprise. While other companies are actively using information in audio format, the company IT Marketing has not yet implemented this in its management toolkit. These two indicators are interrelated and the lack of attention to them may affect other indicators of this group.
At the same time, the indicators of the factor of online teamwork show a relatively high level. So it can be concluded that these indicators tend to be high. According to the calculations shown next figure, the indicators of the factor, the ability to do stable and predictable work, show the average level of job digitalization in terms of moral readiness for remote work. Self-discipline, self-control and professional development indicators show a high level. In addition, the level of creativity is high, but consideration should be given to such questions as grade the level of taking the initiative in your work and grade the level of how often you make your own decisions and their coefficients are below average. The employees are neutral about taking the initiative in their work and making their own decisions. The correlation of these indicators leads to the following results. Such questions as grade the level of self-discipline, grade the level of new tools learning, and grade the level of how innovative you are, are interconnected. So they already show a high level, thus it can be argued that the factors of self-discipline, self-control, and professional development tend to be high. Analyzing stage one and stage two, we notice a link between the indicators of the factors of information system usage and online tools usage, which have a great influence on the factor of the ability to do stable and predictable work. New figure calculations show a satisfactory level of job digitalization in terms of security and reliability of the digital workplace. Particular attention needs to be given to the use of the mobile internet, the ability to detect viruses in electronic information and the ability to install digital security systems. Now, the indicators are below average, so they cannot ensure quality remote work. It has to do with stage one and the indicators of information system and online tools usage. Furthermore, the installation of digital security systems is not used to organize the operation of the enterprise. Ignoring these systems is a major disadvantage as they affect other indicators. However, the estimates of the level of files downloaded from the internet and the number of digital gadgets used at work show a high enough level. So we can conclude that these figures provide stable, high-performance remote work. Next figure calculations show a satisfactory level of job digitalization in terms of multiplatformity and consistent success. The ability to detect viruses in electronic information and the ability to install digital security systems are connected with the coefficients of consistent access to remote sites and the ability to use websites across different platforms. So special attention should be paid to improving the quality of remote work. The results of the study show that the indicators of factors at this stage are very heterogeneous. For example, the Wi-Fi stability indicators suggest a high level of stability. However, consistent access to remote facilities is average, with an estimated figure of just 2.147. This may indicate that despite having good access to the internet, employees do not take full advantage of these capabilities. The high level of usage of different browsers at work is a positive thing and correlated with uh, the numbers of digital gadgets used by employees on stage three. The indicators have almost identical figures, 2.743 and 2.762. It is also necessary to estimate the overall level of the workplace digitalization and the enterprise IT marketing and the level by stages. From the calculations, it is clear that out of 100 possible points of assessing the level of workplace digitalization, the company IT marketing is gaining 63.38 points. This indicator is higher than the average level, but at the same time, it suggests how many problematic areas exist in the current organization of 
work at the enterprise. The calculation by the methodology gives an accurate understanding of the weaknesses. For example, the issues within the first stage need the most attention and change. Moral readiness to work requires the least intervention. It must be maintained at the current level. Thus, it can be argued that the successful improvement and management of distance work needs many versatile mechanisms, from technical support to quality organization of the work process and control over the moral of employees. The atmosphere in the team is important, and each employee must feel that they are part of the great mechanism and feel their own responsibility for the final product and for each of their co-workers. As can be seen from the study, adding a stage of moral readiness is a crucial aspect for assessing the level of job digitalization. We have noticed that some of the indicators at the stage one, three, and four correlate with the second stage indicators. This allows us to assume that there are more complicated links between the indicators which were assigned out in this study. Overall, the study shows the necessity of considering all four stages without neglecting any of them. This is due to the underestimation of the importance of the digital workplace. Moreover, this is the case now when the organization of remote management in the enterprise is becoming widespread and essential practice. Thanks a lot for attention. Hope to be the keynote speaker on next conferences. Goodbye. Dear colleagues and friends, good afternoon. My name is Olga Ilash and today I am representing here the International University of Finance and National Technical University of Ukraine, Igor Sikorsky KU Polytechnic Institute. Taking the advantage, I would like to bring warm wishes from Ukraine. I am amazed by scientific expertise gathered here in such difficult COVID time. I am deeply honored to be the keynote speaker of the Congress. I am sure many Many of you have made a huge effort to join us virtually today. Also, I would like to express my big appreciations to the organizing committee of Yumishana University for performing so huge and excellent job. Let me share with you the results of our research, World Drivers of a Social Breakthrough. Is an economic miracle possible in Ukraine? which we prepared with my co-author, Director of International University of Finance, Professor Lubov Smolar, and devoted to the implementation the best foreign practices for the economic and social progress. As you can see, the structure of our research consists of three parts. Primarily, we started from the study of experience of countries that have made a social breakthrough. For this purpose, the experience of 19 countries that have made the social progress has been systematized. Moving on the part to analysis and systematization of the components that have ensured a social breakthrough, I want to emphasize that the system of functional components is offered and the comparative monitoring of eight indicators which have given the chosen countries of the world the opportunity to make a social breakthrough in comparison with, with Ukraine is carried out. And finally, in the part three, the recommendations to the public authorities of Ukraine regarding the creation of the social progress recommendations to public authorities that are aimed at creating the main benchmarks of the social breakthrough of Ukraine have been prepared. The point is the mission of the social breakthrough policy is economic growth due to the welfare economy. What I mean is there is much that we need to rethink about the current model of sustainable economic and social growth of Ukraine. The practice of a social breakthrough of the state is based on sustainable economic growth and remains an important tool for fighting poverty and improving the quality of life of the population. For the least developed and developing countries, economic growth is crucial for education, health, the quality of the life and the population. It's also clear that in the future, breakthrough business models will be social. 
which will provide citizens with financial and non-financial value through positive consequences. At the same time, a 10-year average annual growth of Ukraine's gross domestic product in 2019 was only 0.1%, which is 67 times lower than the growth rate of this indicator in China, 46 times lower than in Singapore, more than 20 times lower than in the United States. Canada and South Korea, 2 and 3 percent respectively. It's obvious that it's impossible to achieve the declared growth of Ukraine's economy by 40 percent over the next five years. Even the country's gross domestic product rises by 5 percent in 2020 and by 7 percent in the next five years. I was absolutely amazed by the results of the monitoring survey, which showed that in recent years there has been a decrease in public support for the ongoing reforms. For example, 53.3% of respondents are not ready to tolerate a decline in the standard of living, while the proportion of those who believe that in the coming year no positive changes in Ukraine would occur increased by 11% and amounted to 51.7%. This state of affairs indicates that the process of accumulation of subjects in the wealth in 2018. I want to underline that the Bloomberg's misery index is calculated based on inflation and in unemployment forecast for 66 countries. But the question is, who is the world driver of a social breakthrough for Ukraine today? And is an economic miracle possible in Ukraine in the social direction? And how to achieve a social breakthrough? And what problems and challenges we are facing now. Let's turn to indicators we choose for analyzing economic and social progress in mentioned countries and Ukraine. We found that among technological and innovative, educational and scientific, financial and economic, in environmental areas, and the quality of public policy indicators, a social breakthrough would be achieved through stimulating the employment level and reducing the level of long-term unemployment, implementing programs of social support for the population, and fair remuneration for work done, improving the level and quality of people's lives. In this case, we recommend to use the system of eight indicators which represent us the directions of social progress in Ukraine. Among them, employment and long-term unemployment levels, the share of contributions to social needs, average salary and average life expectancy, standard of living, Gini index and skills of the future workers. Let's move to the part one of our research. The need to ensure a policy of the social breakthrough for increasing the competitiveness and innovation of the national economy, developing the welfare economy as well as meeting new challenges of the coronavirus infection COVID-19 and social challenges in the context of total digitalization and change in the quality of life of the population of Ukraine has led to the implementation of the process of systematizing the experience of the countries that have made a social breakthrough in innovative, social, educational and scientific, financial and economic, environmental areas and the quality of public policy. We'd like to start with the experience of China, implementation of the programs to increase the the efficiency of using the workforce would improve the high level of productivity and effectiveness of social labor in our country. For example, during 1979-1994, an increase in labor productivity led to more than 42% growth in China's economy. In our opinion, it would be great to implement the experience of Japan. The policy of lifelong employment and warranties of an employee provided by the business, in particular pensions, are received in one payment on the principles of one month's salary 
for each year worked would help to decrease the level of long-term unemployment in Ukraine. Among interesting policies, programs, and progressive changes in the economic and social spheres, which will provide the social breakthrough in Ukraine, let me emphasize such as programs of constructive partnership of the state employers and trade unions, the experience of Finland, the experience of Great Britain could be reforms to the pension system, education, healthcare and social insurance, which contributed to an improvement in living standards, a reduction in unemployment, an increase in the role of the financial sector, which is regulated by the state the experience of Switzerland, labor intensity programs and incentives to ensure a high level of employment of the population. The policy of spreading the Swiss work culture and the respect for education has formed a highly qualified, educated and creative middle class. Forest and environmental uh, protection policies, which in the long run will have a positive economic effect and create conditions for future economic growth. The experience of Brazil, the policy to guarantee minimum working conditions for people working in official labor markets, government subsidies for farmers to stimulate production, export or surplus production in Brazilian cities, the policy on creating new jobs in order to meet the demands and expectations of the workforce growth, the experience of Singapore programs to increase the salaries of judges and civil servants in order to reduce the level of corruption in the government, housing and communal, um, communal reform, sorry. Uh, government policy to increase the population by 30% until 2030. The baby bonus program offers cash benefits to parents who want to have more children. And finally, a program of reforms that will allow to some extent the social partnership system to be gradually eroded the experience of Austria and a lot of others. Let's move to analysis and systematization of Compound 2. I would like to share with you our findings of the ratio between the social breakthrough indicators of Ukraine and the countries of progressive development. In the table of this slide, I want to compare four indicators of Ukrainian social development, among them the level of employment, the share of contributions to social security, the average, the life expectancy in Gini index with the developed countries I mentioned before. I'd like to start by talking about the level of employment. It's possible to increase the level of employment and reduce the level of unemployment among people of working age only if there is steady GDP growth. For example, in 2019, South Korea showed the highest indicators of employment at the age of 1564 at the level of approximately 80%. South Korea's labor policy was aimed at creating much better jobs and maintaining sustainable growth, increasing private sector investment in regional professional training. The high level of employment, together with the low standardization of the education system, satisfy the condition of a high level of need. The highest indicators of employment of the same age group are also observed in China and Singapore. Germany, Denmark, Australia, the United States and the, uh, the United Kingdom from 68.7% up to 77%, which is 22% higher than the employment rate in Ukraine, where we have 54%. The Danish employment model is the structural employment rate of 80% by 2020 for people aged 20, 64, as part of implementation of the national goal in the Europe 2020 strategy. I am afraid it has nothing to do with the fact that the Ukraine demonstrate the average level of the share of contributions of social security. The highest level of social security 
contributions uh, is shown by Germany, Japan and Finland, 15.4 and 11.9 respectively, including due to the participation of employees in production management. In Ukraine, the share of social security contributions is 9.88%, which is 4.5% less than in Germany. The high level of social support for the population of Japan is provided by the social reforms carried out by the government for developing human resources and increasing labor productivity, by the improvement in the social economic system for creating a 100-year-old society. The Japanese government also meets social challenges by introducing innovation of the fourth industrial revolution as well as establish global cooperation that encourages business, innovation and growth. In particular, they have developed the concept of the public assistance system, the law on state aid, the law on support for the needy. Another indicator of a social breakthrough is the average life expectancy, which in Ukraine in 2019 was 72.5 years. That is 11.2 years less than in Australia, 83.9 years, Singapore, 84 years, Finland, 82.4 years and Japan 85 years. The government of, of Singapore introduced the baby bonus program in 2001, adopted rigid met methods of regulating the number of cars to prevent environmental pollution and created the program of preventive uh, medicine concerning the prevention of chronic diseases. It's also clear that the reducing economic inequality in the country is a priority of a social and economic breakthrough. If we take into consideration the fact that inequality in the world has been growing in recent decades, Ukraine looks strange with its Gini index of 25%, while the incomes of 10% of the richest and 10% of the poorest Ukrainians have taken into account the shadow deeper by 40 times. For instance, Americans, uh, sorry, the share of the national income per 1% of the richest uh, American people has increased from 10% to 41.5% since 1980. In many countries, including the United Kingdom, Canada, China, India, Sweden, the share of the national income per 1% of the population has risen in China and Australia. This figure is 38.6% uh, and 35.8% um, respectively. Another thing that can be brought to uh, your attention is the ratio between the average salary and the skills of the future workforce indicators of Ukraine and those of the countries of progressive development. Please look at the figure 4, which demonstrates that the United States of America is the leader in the most indicators of social development, including in the level of average salary. For example, in the USA, has uh, the USA has the highest standard of living, 63.6 among all the countries we have studied. When in Ukraine, this figure is critically low, only nine, which is seven times less than uh, US uh, has one of the highest average salaries, 3.6 uh, thousand US dollars. Japan showed one of the lowest unemployment rates, 2.5%, one of the highest average wages per month, which is 89% more than in Ukraine. It has just 400 US dollars. In Singapore, Denmark and Australia, those figures are about 3.1 thousand US dollars. In 2018, Japan adopted new legislation on reforming the Japanese style of work, which was aimed at reducing the number of overtime hours and ensuring equal pay for equal work. 
One more step you could take is that the university, as generators of new ideas and innovation, play a key role in the effort to build the future of Europe and the world using competences and education. At the same time, the skills of the future workforce will contribute to social innovation and social breakthrough of the country. For example, the skills of the future workforce in Ukraine are estimated at 72.6 points. In Denmark, for example, 87.3 points. In uh, the United States, 78.4 points. China received 69 points due to the creation of free economic zones, which are open to professional development of employees. The United States and the United Kingdom established clubs for primary and secondary school students to study key elements of future education. Finland and Switzerland developed strategies of future skills, a review of curricula and assessment framework. The Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment of Finland will introduce free access to the online course elements of artificial intelligence for all European citizens during 2020-2021. I have no doubts the next of important indicators we have found in our research is the ratio between social breakthrough indicators of Ukraine, our long-term unemployment level and the standard of living. Let's look on a figure. Uh, five and six. According to uh, Eurostat data, in 2018, a high unemployment rate was the most common for Finland, 7.8%, uh, uh, and Canada, 5.9%, while it was the lowest for Singapore in 2019. It was 2.1%. Singapore's active labor market policy was aimed at improving the digital skills and competences of employees. The level of long-term unemployment is among the important indicators of social breakthrough since from the unemployed. It increases the risk of losing skills and reduces their chances of employment. The unemployed lose their uh, ability of self-organized and after two or three years of any inactivity the state loses the workforce because they need long-term rehabilitation to change uh, the situation. In 2019 the lowest long-term unemployment rates remained uh, in the United Kingdom, Denmark, Norway and Germany and, and uh, were estimated from 0.8 to 1.2% respectively. In 2018, in the total number of unemployed who were looking for a job for more than 12 months, the percentage of young people aged 15, 34 was about 40s, uh, while in Germany it was 5.3%. In Germany, the current employment uh, policy and the policy on reducing unemployment are characterized by a wave of four labor market reforms during 2003-2005, including the introduction of temporary work and the improvement in working conditions for temporary work. The uh, law on ensuring employment and stability was enacted to encourage short-time work, temporary uh, employment and technical and vocational training. In 2013, all countries of the European Union undertook the task of implementing the EURS guarantee. In 2016, the law on integration accelerated the integration of refugees into the labor market. I am absolutely persuaded the social breakthrough can be achieved by increasing the standard of living of the population, estimated through GNI per capita and purchasing power parity. The highest indicators are observed in Denmark. 56.4 US dollars, Finland and Australia, 50 US dollars, Germany and Japan, 44 US dollars. In Ukraine, the standard of living is measured at about 9 US dollars, which is seven times less than in the United States. Australia's welfare and health 
uh, care policy is based on a unique social security system and provides a fixed rather than earning related benefit that is founded from total income. But how would we reinvent it? Would we build new social policy? We are convinced convinced that given the critical technological, innovative, educational, scientific, social, financial and economic, environmental and state building factors in escalation economic problems in Ukraine, recommendations made to the government bodies regarding the creation of the components of a social breakthrough should become the priority areas of the social breakthrough policy and intensification of state policy on ensuring economic prosperity and economic growth in Ukraine. Thus, I would like to share with you our recommendation to the public authorities of Ukraine regarding the creation of a social breakthrough. We have been summarized based on the analytical part on the reset and present them in the part three. Firstly, our recommendation goes to the Ministry of Social Policy of Ukraine to initiate a labor policy aimed at creating much better jobs and maintaining sustainable growth, increasing private sector investment in regional professional training. Secondly, to the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine and to the Ministry of Social Policy. At the legislative le level, take appropriate measures to balance work, life and skills uh, development. What I mean is that employees who have children under three years old will receive financial assistant, uh, assistance if they work part-time and stay with children the rest of the time. Employees will be uh, entitled to three paid training days per year to develop their professional skills and competences. Also, special tax rabbits uh, for companies with 20 or more employees. Employers annually implement programs for the development of their staff. Uh, it would be great uh, to use the experience of Denmark and Finland mentioned be, um, uh, about. Develop of comprehensive industrialization program 4.0 by finding work for the unemployed. These changes will stimulate economic growth, create more well-paid jobs for the middle class, the experience of Canada, Singapore and South Korea, prepare an employment strategy and a strategy to reduce unemployment, which will include a wave of four labor market reforms, in particular, the introduction of temporary work and the improvement in working conditions for temporary employment, the development of a program to support employees with low income who can benefit from regulations on taxes and social insurance. And the employer will be able to set up their own businesses with up to three years support from government funding. I really feel that I would suggest to develop the concept of the public assistance system as well as adopt the law on state aid and the law on support for the needy. This will help to increase the level of social support and improve the level and quality of life of uh, socially vulnerable groups. Uh, it would be great to use the experience of Japan. Uh, to the Ministry of uh, Education and Science of Ukraine, adopt the law on compulsory vocational training, student training and employment, which will adapt the education system to business needs and encourage employers to hire young professionals. To the State Labor Service of Ukraine initiate the program for improving labor efficiency, the experience of China, and the labor intensity program, the experience of Switzerland. We'd like to suggest some important direction to the Ministry of Healthcare to for example, to initiate welfare and healthcare policies that will be based on a unique social security system and will provide a fix from total income. And in the addition, it ensures productivity growth by 2% annually. These policies will increase income per capita by 4% until 2020. 
2025, the experience of Australia. We found that the best recommendations to the Minister of Economy, Trade and Agriculture of Ukraine could be to establish small business development administration and launch a program, new leaders, uh, leaders initiative, or accelerate the growth of high potential small businesses. This program will help to create a curriculum based on the experience of advisors and business leaders in urban communities across the country, provide tools for bringing a company to a new level and help in enter the international uh, market. Piece of advice would be to the Ministry of Regional Development, Construction and Housing of Ukraine to um, introduce housing and communal reform, a policy of encourage to purchase of own apartments instead of renting them. In order to do, it's necessary to initiate the creation of central savings uh, fund to which every citizen and employee is obligated to transfer 20 percent the experience of singapore and finally it would be great to implement the best turkish government managing practices in ukraine uh, the data of turkish case also point the world bank and the international funds have been key actors in shaping the contours of social security and healthcare reform in turkey through finance project initiation implementation expect advice and support their rule has been more direct and more visible than in the European Union. Turkey's long established cooperation with both of those institutions, the 2001 crisis and the uh, consensus, uh, I mean, in the reform outlook between the international financial institutions and successive Turkish governments are the key factors accounting for their ability to influence Turkish social policy over a number of years. And a lot, a lot of other mechanisms and programs which uh, we can adapt and implement in the Ukrainian economy for achieving uh, great results uh, in the way of social breakthrough. Dear colleagues, based on above mentioned ideas, let me once again underline the importance of implementation of world drivers' experience of social breakthrough in Ukraine. Now we are convinced that it's not like a miracle. What we will do is never like a sprint more like a long distance run and it's rarely about reflection it's about progress of ukraine thank you for your attention during these hectic times i am grateful for the chance to be keynote speaker and hope to see all of you next year we believe in ukraine and fruitful cooperation with turkey take care goodbye Bye. <laughs> Tüm katılımcıları saygıyla selamlıyorum. Uluslararası Bilimsel Araştırma Kongresi'ni düzenleyen değerli akademisyenlere ve tüm emeği geçenlere teşekkür ediyor, başarılar diliyorum. Bu sunumda sizlerle afete dirençlilik kavramını paylaşacağım. Bildiğiniz üzere 30 Ekim tarihinde İzmir'de 6,9 büyüklüğünde bir deprem meydana geldi. Ve ne yazık ki 116 vatandaşımız bu depremde hayatını kaybetti. Ülkemizde her büyük ve yıkıcı afet sonrasında olduğu gibi İzmir depreminin ardından da afetlerde can ve mal güvenliğini nasıl sağlamak gerektiğine dair birçok kişi pek çok farklı açıklamada bulundu. Ve yine her afet sonrasında olduğu gibi afetleri olan aşırı hassasiyetimiz konusundaki gerçekler depremden birkaç gün sonra gündemden uzaklaştı. Ve şu sıralarda da maalesef tamamen unutuldu. Ve insanlarımız sanki hiçbir şey olmamış ve bundan sonra da olmayacakmış gibi gündelik normal yaşantısına döndü. Halbuki ülkemiz başlı başına bir deprem bölgesidir ve pek çok biri fay hattı içermektedir. Deprem uzmanları özellikle yakın gelecekte ülkemizin birçok bölgesinde büyük depremler olabileceği uyarısını yapmaktadır. Burada özellikle vurgulamak gerekir ki İzmir depremi sonrasında bu kez farklı olan en önemli konu özellikle hükümet yetkililerinin afetlerde oluşan 
can ve mal kayıplarının en aza indirilmesi konusunda yapmış oldukları açıklamaların genel içeriğidir. Yetkililer halkın afetlere hazırlıklı olmasını belirterek insanları daha güvenli konutlarda oturmaya davet ettiler. Sonuç itibariyle afetlere dirençli bir toplum yapısının tesis edilmesi konusunda hükümet yetkililerince bir fikir birliği oluştuğunu idrak ettik. İzmir depreminde devletin tüm imkanları ile afet zedilerin yanında olduğu, 99 depremi ile kıyaslandığında devletin en kısa süre içerisinde afet bölgesinde arama kurtarma çalışmalarına başladığı vurgusu da ihmal edilmedi. Böylelikle ülkemizdeki afet yönetimi şeklinin geçmişte de olduğu gibi günümüzde de kriz odaklı olduğunu, hazırlıklı olma kavramının oluşabilecek bir afet sonrasında en kısa sürede ve en etkili bir şekilde müdahalede bulunmayı kapsadığını bir kez daha görmüş olduk. Halbuki AFAD'ın kuruluş yasası olan 2009 tarihli 5902 sayılı yasada ülkemizin risk odaklı bütünleşik yönetim, afet yönetim modelini benimseyeceği açıkça belirtilmiş olup bu yaklaşım devletin afet zararlarını en aza indirmek konusunda gereğini yapma açısından bir taahhüt oluşturmaktır. Bütünleşik afet yönetim sistemi incelendiğinde iki genel kavram ön plana çıkmaktadır. Afete hazır bir toplum ve afete dirençli ülke. Burada da görüldüğü gibi afete dirençli olan ülke halk değil, topyekün ülke olmalıdır. Bu kavram içerisinde devlet bir yandan tüm mekanizmaları ile afet risklerini bertaraf etmek, en azından riskleri en az seviyeye indirmek için çaba sarf etmek, diğer yandan da vatandaşlarının afetlere hazırlıklı olması bakımında gerekli eğitim çalışmalarını yürütmek, böylelikle afet bilinci ve kültürü gelişmiş bir toplum yapısı tesis etmek yönünde olmalıdır. Tüm bunlar için devletin demokrasi kültürü ile ekonomisiyle, hukuk sistemiyle, alt ve üst yapısı itibariyle afetlere dönük dirençli olmak adına vatandaşına güven verecek bir durumda olması gerekmektedir. Birleşmiş Milletler'in 2015-2030 yılları arasını kapsayan afet risklerinin azaltılması programı da temelde bu konuları kapsamaktadır. Türkiye'nin de yer aldığı afet risk azaltımı Avrupa Forumu'nun her yıl düzenlediği ve 2017 yılı toplantısının AFAD'ın ev sahipliğinde İstanbul'da yapıldığı etkinliklerde de benzer konular ele alarak ele alınarak tartışılmaktadır. Bu konuda elzem olan öncelik afet zararlarının azaltılması için yapılması gerekenlerin halkın temsilcilerinden oluşan millet meclisinde ele alınması ve tüm gerçekleriyle tartışılarak karara bağlanmasıdır. Doğal olarak bunun için en kısa sürede güçlendirilmiş bir parlamenter sistemin kurulması gerekmektedir. Aynı zamanda mevzuatta bulunan ve afetlere dirençli ülke olma yolunda sorunlar teşkil eden yanlış uygulama kaynakları da tespit edilmeli ve mevzuattan ayıklanmaları sağlanmalıdır. Bu sayede yanlış ve hassas yapılaşma engellenmeli, afetlere dirençli olma konusundaki en büyük engellerden biri olan yolsuzluklar, ortadan kaldırılmalıdır. Çünkü istatistikler afetlerin en çok gelişmekte olan ülkelerde can ve mal kaybına sebep olduğunu ortaya koymaktadır. Bunun en temel nedeni ise ne yazık ki bu tür ülkelerde demokrasinin tesisinde yaşanan aksaklıklar ve yönetim anlayışına egemen olmuş olan yolsuzluklardır. Sürdürülebilir bir ekonomi için afete dirençlilik şarttır. Afete dirençli ülke olabilmek için gelişmiş ve zengin olmak gerekli değildir. Aksine zengin ve gelişmiş bir ülke olabilmek adına afete dirençli bir ülke konumuna gelebilmek bir ön şarttır. Yaşanan her afet büyüklüğüne göre artan miktarlarda can ve mal kaybına neden olmaktadır. Afet sonrasında rehabilitasyon çalışmaları için çok büyük bir maddi kaynak gerekmektedir. Ve bu da konan yeni vergilerle 
vatandaşa ve hatta doğmamış nesillere de uzanabilen maddi yüklere neden olmaktadır. Halbuki akılcı yöntemleri uygulayarak afete dirençli ülke konumuna ulaşmış toplumlar, kaynaklarını gelecek nesillerinin daha refah bir hayat sürmesi ve varlıklarının güçlü bir şekilde devamı adına kullanabilmektedirler. Krizler bazen fırsatları da beraberinde getirebilir. Devletler oluşan bir afet sonrası ortaya çıkan zararın telafisi konusunda akılcı projeleri uygulamaya koyabilirlerse, afet bölgesinde daha güvenli bir yaşam koşulu tesis edebilirler. Bunun için afet bölgesinin afete neden olan hadisi açısından detaylı bir analizi sonrasında yapılabilecek doğru uygulamalar belirlenmelidir. Bunlar arasında inşaat kalitesinin yükseltilmesi, altyapının güçlendirilmesi veya bölgenin tümüyle güvenli bir yere nakli gibi çözümler devreye sokulabilir. Örneğin kentsel dönüşüm projeleri bu sayede derhal hayata geçirilebilir. Bu konuda diğerleri gibi tamamen merkezi yönetim inisiyatifinde olan bir konudur. Konuyla ilgili yasal düzenlemeler ivedilikle yapılmalı, deprem vergisi adı altında oluşturulan fon bu konuya kaynak oluşturacak şekilde çalışmalara başlanmalıdır. Riskli bölgelerde ve konutlarda yaşayan her vatandaşımız hiçbirinin hakkı yenmeden, mağdur edilmeden, kendilerine ek bir maddi külfet getirilmeden güvenli konutlara nakli sağlanmalıdır. Risk altındaki bölgelerde yeni yapılaşmalara izin verilmemelidir. Ülkenin mevcut kaynakları tümüyle bu konuya sevk edilmeli. Aciliyeti olmayan yatırım projeleri en az 10 yıl süreyle askıya alınmalıdır. Benzer şekilde ülkenin riskli bölgelerinde yer alan rafineri, fabrika gibi stratejik tesisler de deprem ve diğer afet riskleri açısından güvenli olan bölgelere taşınmalıdır. Risklerin belirlenmesi konusunda yürütülecek bilimsel ve akademik çalışmalar teşvik edilmelidir. Risklerin ve bunlara yönelik çözüm önerilerinin oluşturulmasında bölge insanlarının görüşleri mutlaka yer almalıdır. Ülkemizin güvenli yapılaşma önündeki en temel sorun imarlaşma, müteahhitlik ve yapı denetimi üstünde yaşanmaktadır. Özellikle zemin etütlerinin yapılmasında modern bilimsel yöntemlerin kullanılmadığı gözlenmektedir. İmara açılacak arazilerde basit ve ucuz birkaç sondaj çalışması ile zeminin geneli hakkında fikir sahibi olunmakta. Bu nedenle de çoğu binanın temeli zemine ve bina statiğine uygun yapılmamaktadır. O nedenle binaların sağlam biri olsa deprem nedeniyle yan yaptıkları gözlenmektedir. Yapılması gereken Belediyelerin üniversitelerin ilgili akademik birimleriyle işbirliği içerisinde güncel jeofizik tekniklerini kullanarak imara açılacak arazilerde kapsamlı ekip çalışmaları yapması, bu sayede zemin özelliklerini en doğru şekilde ortaya koyarak yapılacak inşaatlarda buna uygun, buna uygun standartları şart koşmasıdır. Sorumlu üçgenin ikinci kenarı olan müteahhitlik mesleği ise Türkiye'de en kolay yapılabilecek mesleklerden biridir. Müteahhit olmak için devletin denetimine tabi bir okuldan mezun olma zorunluluğu bulunmamaktır. Parası olan belediyeye başvurup ruhsat alıp inşaata başlayabilmektedir. Halbuki bir bina projesinin gerçek sahibi o projeyi çizen mimar olmalı ve bina o mimarın adıyla anılmalıdır. İlk bakışta basit gibi görünen bu yaklaşım gerçekte insan yaşamı ve kalitesi açısından çok önemli. Adıyla yaşayacak bir eserin sahibi hiçbir zaman eserinin kötü olmasını istemez. Her zaman daha iyisini yapmak için kendisini geliştirir. Üçgenin son kenarını ise sorunlu yapı denetimi mekanizması oluşturmaktır. Yapı denetimini yapan firmalar aslında müteahhit firmalarının yan kuruluşlarıdır. O nedenle inşaat aşamalarında olabilecek birçok kusur görmezden gelinebilmektedir. İnşaatın her aşaması en ince ayrıntısına varana incelenmesi gereken çok önemli konulardır. Bunun yerine çoğunlukla inşaatın başlangıcında alınan numuneler ve yapılan gözleme dayalı incelemeler 
inşaatın sonraki aşamaları için de kıstas kabul edilmektedir. Yapılması gereken bina denetiminin halk adına belediyeler tarafından yapılmasını sağlayacak yasal düzenlemelerin bir an önce hazırlanmasıdır. Sonuç itibariyle afetlere dirençli bir ülke oluşturabilmek için devletin ve yürütme mekanizmasının üzerine düşen bu görevlerin yanı sıra afete hazır bir toplum oluşturabilmek yolunda her vatandaşa düşen sorumluluklar da gözden kaçırılmamalıdır. Öncelikle toplumdaki konumu ve görevi ne olursa olsun 7'den 70'e her vatandaş afete hazırlık konusunda uygulanan eğitimine katılmalı. Bu açıdan üzerine düşen her türlü sorumluluğu eksiksiz olarak yerine getirmelidir. Bununla birlikte yaşadığımız konutların manzarasından ziyade kalitede güvenliğini sorgulamalı ve buna göre konut tercihlerimizi belirlemeliyiz. Yaşadığımız ve içinde bulunduğumuz mekanların yapısal olmayan risk faktörleri açısından değerlendirmesini yapmalı ve örneğin üzerimize devrilecek veya kaçış yollarını kapatabilecek eşyalar gibi bizleri bekleyen tehlikeleri belirleyerek bunları sabitleme gibi yöntemler uygulayıp bertaraf etmeliyiz. Konutlarımızı doğal afetlere yönelik sigorta ettirmeliyiz. Sigorta firmaları sigorta primi belirlerken risk analizi yaparlar. Bu da haliyle inşaat kalitesine ve bölgenin afetselliğine bağlıdır. Bu nedenle afete dirençliği geçmesi adına doğal afet sigortacılığının ve kapsamının geliştirilmesi çok yararlı olur. Herhangi bir afet anında nasıl davranmamız gerektiğini, içinde bulunduğumuz mekanları nasıl terk etmemiz gerektiğini, çevremizde bulunan ve afetlerde hassas grupları oluşturan çocuk, kadın, yaşlı ve engelli bireylere nasıl destek olabileceğimizi öğrenmeli ve bunları alışkanlık haline getirmeliyiz. Bizi devlet yönetiminde temsil eden seçmiş olduğumuz temsilcileri, faaliyetleri açısından denetlemeliyiz. Halkın yararına olan faaliyetleri desteklemeli, olmayanları ise eleştirmeli ve onaylamamalıyız. Afetlere dirençli bir ülkede, afetlere hazır bir toplum halinde güvenle yaşayabilmenin yegane temelinin tesis edilebilmesi, tüm vatandaşları ile devletin en üst yönetim makamından tüm kurum ve kuruluşlara, özel sektör ile sivil toplum örgütlerine kadar, bütünleşik afet yönetimi sisteminin tüm paylaşlarının üzerine düşen görev ve sorumlulukları tam bir görev anlayışı ve disiplin içerisinde ciddiyet değer olarak uygulaması neticesinde mümkün olabilecektir. Katılım ve ilginiz için teşekkür ediyorum. Hepinize afetsiz günler diliyorum. Sevgiyle esen kalın. Davetli konuşmacılarımıza katıldıkları ve kongremize destek verdikleri için teşekkür ederiz. Değerli katılımcılar, oturumlarımız 13 itibariyle başlayacaktır. E, salonlara ait bilgiler kongre ana sayfasında kongre canlı kısmında yer alacaktır. Oturumları oradan takip edebilirsiniz. E, katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz. You are currently the only person in this conference.